you'll notice that as we were, we were reading, we went past one of these little jump-off point symbols, as we call them, a little speech bubble. So that means at this point we can stop and do one of the activities. Um, and the activities always take the same form. When you get to one of these speech bubbles and you go onto the website, you will find that initially there's discussion questions, so you can talk a little bit around what you've read. Then there is a hands-on activity, at least one, sometimes there's two or three. And then after you've done the activity, there will be reflective questions, because we've discovered that it's really, really useful to <coughs> reflect on what you've learned from reading and doing the activity. So what we are going to do between now and lunchtime is some of these discussion questions related to this particular jump-off point, you are here, and one of the hands-on activities related to this. I'm going to bring round what I hope is a map of basically any town Scotland. When you look at it, you should find the kinds of landmarks that you'd find in pretty much any reasonably sized town in Scotland. They're recognisable landmarks. Um, and this is so that the activity can be used anywhere in Scotland, hopefully. And then you'll see at the top, there's the question, where do you think sectarianism happens? And the instruction is, mark each place that you think sectarianism happens with a dot or a cross. This is another exercise like the vote with your feet exercise. The beauty of it is it gives you a really useful snapshot of the extent to which your learners are aware of sectarianism. And this takes it to a new level because it gives you a snapshot of the extent to which they're aware of it in their community, and it gives you a sense of where they might have experienced sectarian language or behaviour. Um, and the reason I say, did, did anyone put no dots, is because that gives you as much information as a map that's covered in dots. If someone's got absolutely no experience of this, that's useful for you to know as well. Here are three examples of maps created by learners and tutors from different groups across the country. In this first map, which was created by the tutor working on his own, um, you'll see that there are a lot of marks that he's put on the map. There's also some handwritten notes. Basically what happened here was the tutor created a kind of ranking system in which the areas where he felt that sectarianism were most likely to happen, he put more dots, and the places where he thought it was less likely to happen, he put less. And most of the handwritten notes that you can see here just say, can happen anywhere. When we discussed the maps in the group afterwards, the tutor freely admitted that he'd slightly misread the question and had assumed he was being asked, where can sectarianism happen? This is a useful discussion to have, and this activity provides a good starting point for that discussion. However, these maps are useful as they allow you to see where each learner thinks sectarianism does happen within their community. The map completed by the learner from the same group illustrates this really well. You can see they have a lot less dots. This also means that if a learner is given this map activity and makes no marks on the sheet at all, that's still a useful result. It suggests that this learner has no personal experience of sectarianism happening around them in their community. The question has been worded, where do you think sectarianism happens, deliberately, in order to keep the activity as accessible and open as possible. With a location like at home included on the map, asking where have you experienced sectarianism is asking for a level of disclosure that some learners might find uncomfortable. This second pair of maps was created in a completely different community by a different group of learners and tutors. You'll see this first one was completed by a tutor and a learner working together. The reason for this was because the learner was really not confident with the activity and asked for help and the tutor agreed to sit and work with them. You'll see that on this map, all but one of the locations have been marked by both the learner and the tutor. We think it's possible that what happened here was the tutor was making their marks and then the learner was simply copying them. If you look at the map by the two learners working together, you'll see that there is still some agreement in where the marks have been placed but there is one crucial difference. One of the learners has marked the at-home box. 
What we suggest with this activity is that if possible, you ask learners to work independently without help from tutors. And if they're really struggling and they're feeling not confident with the activity, you suggest that they work with a peer, another learner, rather than with a member of staff. The reason for this is learners who are not particularly confident will often look to an authority figure and see what their answers are to the activity and simply copy them. This final pair of maps is again from a completely different group of learners and tutors from a completely different area in the country. When you look at the first map you'll see again there are a lot of dots on here and initially it's possible to think the same thing has happened, the learners are copying what the tutor has written. However, when you look a bit more closely, you'll see that the purple marks which were made by the tutor often appear without the learners agreeing and sometimes one learner has made a mark, for example the blue, without the red mark appearing next to it. So there was some disagreement between the learners. Again, if you look at the second map, you'll see there is quite a big difference between where the red marks have been made and where the green marks have been made. What we think is interesting about these maps is they come from an area in Scotland where sectarianism is considered to be quite a big issue. And what we've found in certain geographical areas where this is the case is that learners are much more confident in talking about sectarianism and in discussing where it happens and where they've seen it. So if you are working in an area where sectarianism is considered to be an issue, you might find that your learners are more confident and take to this activity quite quickly.